Hi YouTube, I'm Iman, and welcome back to one of my auto repair videos. In this video, I'm going to de demonstrate filling the coolant using the airlift system, and we're going to do it on a 2004-2009 Toyota Prius. You don't have to use the airlift, uh, you can just use a manual funnel, uh, however, which is understandable because the airlift is really expensive, it's actually around $150. All it does actually is just speed up the time it takes to uh, refill the coolant. This takes about around five minutes to refill the coolant, but a manual funnel takes around one hour to two hours. And this really helps out if you do replace a lot of parts in the car, like we do, uh, because it definitely speeds up the amount of time that you need to refill the coolant. All right, so what's on the agenda of this video is, first we're going to uh, fill this bucket with two gallons of uh, coolant. So this car takes about six gallons, uh, no, six quarts, and that's about 1.5 gallons. And you know, it's just, it's always better to have more than needed. And basically, we're going to try to do it. Uh, we're, not, we're not sure if we're going to be able to get it on camera because this is my first time trying it. And it's a bit flimsy, so uh, we might show on camera. There's no promises. And plus, uh, we don't want to have to uh, try to restart the compressor because we only have one shot at this because it's really late at night. All right, so after that, we're going to talk about how the uh, airless system actually works. All right, so now we're going to pour the coolant in this bucket. And uh, I guess while I'm pouring, I'll explain what we're doing. So basically, first, this, oh, maybe it's too loud, yeah. So basically, what we're doing is, I'm gonna pour a bit slower so it doesn't splash out. So basically, what we're doing is, first, this um, airless system will take out all the air, and it will cause a vacuum in the uh, cooling system. So you'll see that the hoses will get flattened uh, when we do it. And then after that, we're going to hook a hose up, and then we're going to hook it into this bucket. And then after that, we're going to uh, actually fill it with this coolant that's going to be in the bucket. And then that, as the coolant fills, the amount of uh, coolant in this bucket will decrease. And that's why we have more than needed, because if we don't have uh, enough, uh, enough coolant, then the, then the hose will actually suck up air. And that's not what we want. We want it to suck up only coolant. Now we're going to do our second gallon. Alright, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to submerge the entire hose. And uh, you might have to get your hands dirty, so it's a good idea to wear gloves. And what that's going to do is it's going to fill the entire hose with uh, coolant. And then after that, it's currently in the open position. And when it's submerged, we're going to put it into its off position. So that, no, it's closed position so that uh, none of the coolant comes out. So now, open position. Submerge it entirely. And it should fill with coolant. Okay, let's see, all right, just roll up your sleeves in case, and finally, we're going to close it, oh. make sure you submerge it entirely, so open it, and close it, just make sure, and finally, ooh, we got air bubbles, hmm. Alright, so we finally got, uh, have all the coolant filled in the hose and we, fi we figured out that the strategy for this is basically that as you're doing it to continuously put it down, shake it a bit to get some coolant in there, uh, raise it out of the water to uh, then uh, let the coolant at the top go down to the bottom and then just continuously do that until eventually the whole coolant, the whole hose is filled. Uh, after that, uh, you, while you're doing this, you're, you're going to see some air bubbles coming out of the end of this uh, spout. And that's because the air bubbles are leaving this hose. So now we're going to set this aside. Make sure that the bottom doesn't leave the bucket or the coolant because you don't want air bubbles in, uh, air bubbles in there. And we're going to focus our attention to the air lift right here. Alright, so next step is to get all the air out. And the way we're going to do that is we have our compressor right here. And we have another hose right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to hook it up with this end connecting to uh, this uh, opening right here, and this end connecting to the end of this hose right here. So uh, this step is also for taking out any uh, remaining uh, coolant in the system, which for, in our example, there probably isn't any left. So I'm probably gonna do this off camera because this takes a bit of strength to do. All right, let's try this.
Look at that. Alright, just gotta watch the gauge. Alright. There we go. So as you just saw, all that air rushed out and down there. Uh, we just put it down there so it would just go down uh, without any uh, trouble. So this also acts as a pressure test. So you can see on the gauge it was 24 to 26. Uh, this actually it was 26. And this is the recommended amount. So if you if this is able to run at 26 uh, PSI for around 20 to 30 seconds, that means that your system has no leaks. And you can also see the effects of this uh, pressure on this hose. You can see that it's completely flattened. Uh, you can see better from I can bear okay this yeah this one right here this is a good way to check if your uh, hoses are all connected correctly and they don't have any leaks all right so I got the coolant hooked up uh, there might be a bit of uh, bad air bubbles because we actually put a clamp at the bottom to keep the bottom half uh, submerged uh, however it doesn't matter because we're gonna bleed the system anyway but in an actual uh, bleed, uh, an actual refilling, you may, you want to make sure there are absolutely no air bubbles. So when you have it hooked up, it's actually easy. You pull this back, put the hose in. Make sure both of these are closed, by the way, so nothing gets out. And then you want to uh, release this so that they're secure. Uh, so while holding this down, we're going to want to uh, either open both of these simultaneously, or this first, or this, and then this second. I'm going to do both of them si simultaneously just in case. So. Three, two, one, go. Wait, oh, wait. Oh, this way. Okay. <laughs> you can hear that suction noise. All right. So you can see that the pressure is changing uh, constantly. You can hear the bubbles, or like the. Uh, the liquid being sucked up, you can see that slowly actually decreasing in water level. <laughs> now it's going down to 10. Make sure that we're holding this down. Now all the coolant is being sucked into the system. So I think once it stops, it's probably full. So and then we can probably close it. But it doesn't look like it's ending yet. Hmm. Oh, so it looks like it's already reached zero pressure, which looks like it stopped. So we're going to close this now. All right, this is the this is the right direction. Uh, my mistake. And all right, so now we're going to measure how much uh, coolant we have left in this bucket because we put in two two gallons. This takes in uh, 1.5 gallons, so we, uh, mathematically speaking, it should be uh, half a gallon left or two quarts. So now to disconnect this hose, uh, which is the reverse of uh, connecting it, we're going to make sure both of these are closed. So they're all at their closed position. Pull this back. Or wait. Pull it back, right? Okay, yeah. So you pull it back, and it should just come right off. Now we're going to uh, hold it vertically and open it. Slowly, it should all sink down to the bottom. You can see that the coolant all flowed down. And now we're going to hold it straight up, straight vertically. Uh, I think we're going to do bottom first. It's going to be a bit hard because I'm a bit short. But as you can see, it's completely void of any coolant. And now we can set this aside. Make sure all the coolant's out. Set this aside. And then we're going to pour this into this container, which has markings on it to measure. So it should be at this line. Two quarts. So let me just take this clamp out of here. Alright, so as always, it's a good idea to have a funnel. So if you have a big one, like this one laying around, uh, this one you can buy at Walmart for like $3. Uh, just use it, just in case you won't spill any coolant. So now we're going to dump it in there. 
Make sure it doesn't overflow as you put it in. Uh, the reason that it's going down so slowly is because uh, we put the funnel in tightly. So there's going to be a bit of uh, pressure keeping it in. So what you want to do is when you have that build up, you just want to lift the funnel a little bit so the air from inside can escape. Or actually, yeah. So now we're going to, we're going to continue. Sorry, my hands are a bit uh, slippery. Now we're going to continue. Finally, there we go. Okay, so let me put this away. And now I'm going to see where it is. So you can see it's just above two quarts right now, uh, but that's because the system hasn't been bled. When we bleed the system, uh, we'll actually use a bit of coolant and we'll go down to two quarts. All right, so uh, I know some of you might say that by having this clamp, we're introducing, we're, by putting this clamp into the coolant, we're actually uh, contaminating the uh, coolant. Uh, just know that we actually made sure that this was pretty much void of any contaminants by first uh, cleaning it, then we used uh, the degreaser, then we washed it off with more coolant. So that meant that there probably shouldn't be any more uh, contaminants on this clamp. So, oh yeah, by the way, when you're refilling coolant, just make sure that there's no uh, contaminants, like uh, there might be dust or uh, some other type of liquid like oil. You just want to make sure that it's only coolant. All right, so next step is just to take this out. So we already had it tightened before, but if you want to loosen it, just uh, twist this to the uh, counterclockwise and you should be able to take it out. So, so you can see right, right now we have an adapter on it actually. So, this, this is because, this is the actual airless system, and you can see how it goes into the hole. And it's actually, uh, too, this, this hole is actually too small to house this airless system, and that's why we have an adapter on it, so that it fits correctly. Now, the reason that we have these uh, towels and these clothes here is to secure it, because we're, we're scared that, no, we're afraid that if we, uh, if we move it during the uh, suction, then it will lose suction. So we want to prevent that, and that's why we have the surround. So, a quick word about airlift. Uh, so it comes with many adapters, as you can see. And the, the instructions are actually on the box, too. So if you get the airlift system, uh, it's around $150, uh, and you don't know how to use it, they're very helpful. Now, they also have different versions, I think, like airlift, Air, airlift 2, airlift 3. Uh, I don't know, actually. This is the original one, though. Um, it's actually uh, really easy to use, really easy to clean, and it comes in a case. So what else is there to ask for? Alright, so we're going to do some post-removal analysis. So we're going to uh, take these away, and we're just going to look at the uh, coolant reservoir itself. Now, when we after this whole process of filling the coolant, this is actually be filled to the brim. Uh, you can see that it's almost, but you can see that the coolant's actually really close but not, not fully, not quite fully. And you can also see that if we look to the right here, that the pump that the hose that I really uh, we previously mentioned is actually back to its full girth right here. Uh, let me correct myself. This is the neck, not the coolant reservoir. The thing right next to it is actually the coolant reservoir. Uh, my bad, it's a bit late at night, so I'm uh, prone to make some mistakes. And uh, I'm Ayman, and I just demonstrated or showed you how to use the airless system. Uh... Alright, so I messed up on that, but as always, I'll see you next time. Signing out. Peace. <laughs> I can't believe I messed up on the closing. The one thing I always do. <laughs>